r slash ask reddit what industry is a lot shadier than it seems avocado farms most of the farms in central america are taken over by the cartel because of how much money is in selling avocados the textbook industry pearson is the ducking mafia mcgraw hill was the bane of my existence for years same I'm really looking forward to graduating to finish school but also so I can stop needing to buy $120 online codes for McGraw Hill. So done with it. Trucking. The margins are razor thin and so everyone is trying to nickel and dime each other constantly. The drivers lie to their dispatchers. The dispatchers lie to the brokers. The brokers lie to the clients. All of this for like $50 100 sometimes. I worked in trucking and the head HR lady for our distribution center was skimming payroll, shorting the checks of the lowest people on the totem pole, then getting cash infusions to petty cash from corporate to return part of the theft as an emergency tied over until the employee's next check, then claiming the rest of the theft as an overage on the next payroll report. I am probably missing a step in her chain but I am not an accountant. It was a scam she managed to work for a couple of years due to her lack of oversight during nationwide management shifts. When she finally got caught, rather than take the bad publicity, the company just let her leave. The last I heard she was working in the same position in an adjacent industry, but still involving transportation. Say la vie. All industries are shadier than they seem. I used to work for a flute manufacturer and it was shady as hell. Deeds. I don't want to name the manufacturer, but it was around the 2008 financial crisis and the place was equity owned and leveraged to ducking Mars. The CEO was committing bank fraud and screwing contractors while laying off employees and enriching himself. Not an industry, but higher academia is badly broken. Some of the smartest people are some of the most badly exploited. Old tenured professors limit the number of faculty many departments can have. Forcing people to work as postdocs forever, effectively doing all the work the prof should be doing in the first place. Meager pay and long hours. Plus constant pressure makes postdocs some of the most depressed people. The grad students are no better either. A lot of the times grad students don't complain about ill treatment, harassment and outright bullying as they don't want to jeopardize their prospects of graduating. If you're a foreigner, this situation becomes even worse. Whether you've a grad student or a post-doctoral researcher. My university recently had massive protests and strikes over grad student wages and treatment. It was looking like they were gaining traction for a bit until coronavirus hit. The university responded by basically mass firing the TAs. It was really disgusting. The maritime industry. Most of the big companies do things by the book and treat crews well because they're afraid of lawsuits and unions. But many smaller mom and pop companies break laws and violate safety regulations with reckless abandon because they are not as visible and can stay under the radar so to speak. It's very common for a small company to ask a captain crew to do something illegal and dangerous in order to increase profit. And for the captain crew to comply out of fear of losing their jobs. And that's just the US maritime industry. Sailors from poorer nations who work on ships are often fed little more than rice and cheap ramen for months at a time and paid pennies for their backbreaking work. I love running tugs for a living. But the industry as a whole is rife with shady business. IDK if it falls under maritime. But I took one look at the job listing for a cruise ship and now I tell all my co-workers to never take a job with one. I'm a stagehand and theater technician. I make decent money fresh out of college, $18.24 an hour depending on venue, even without joining the union, because I do specialized work, looked into a lighting tech spot on a cruise ship, and I'd be getting minimum wage working 50 hours and 7 days a week, Wi-Fi on board costs money out of my paycheck, I'd be in charge of passengers safety off hours if an alarm goes off and we have to get people onto rescue rafts. I'd have a roommate in a small bunk, and all my wages would go directly into a ship debit card so I could give my income straight back to the company to eat. Something about living and working on a boat in the middle of the ocean seems to make employers think they don't have to actually care for their employees. I can imagine working on a boat that isn't filled with people on vacation would be even worse. As a chef owner, I would say delivery services like Grubhub. They take 30% of the sale leaving the restaurant with basically zero dollars in profit. And their customer support is a joke. It's like they hate us. Duck them. Never again. 
pet industry. Basement puppy mills and dogs that are so inbred they can hardly breath. There are plenty of ethical breeders out there, and some unlicensed breeders are ethical even if in a legal grey zone. But the conditions of some of the so-called puppy mills can be really bad. Sometimes when breeds are mixed and the pup gets the recessive genes the breeders weren't looking for, they straight up euthanize it because they know it won't sell. Not to mention how many purebreds are actually not pure at all, and sold as is. Shady. Not just dogs. Tortoises at pet stores. Just find a responsible captive breeder and do not get one from a pet store. Also, macaws are another example. Bearded dragons should be okay, but that's probably the only reptile I'd buy from a pet store. Jewelry Gems Diamonds is pretty dark. I've seen that movie. Sunglass industry. Punny business. But, yes, it's true. I'll use Oakley as an example because it's literally close to home. Oakley has not been the same since they were bought out. Oakley was a great company to work for with great bonuses, swag, and extremely high company morale. Their HQ is one of the coolest buildings you could find and the people were always happy to work for a legendary company that really treated their employees right. Oakley knew their customers well, but at the end of the day, it's still a business. And Luxortica wanted that business. Luxortica bought them out in the end. But not through Oakley's own will. You see, Luxortica owns nearly all the major glasses brands and the stores that carry them. They are one step short of a full monopoly of the entire global eyewear industry. Luxortica wanted Oakley. So they took Oakley off all the shelves of every major glasses retailer until Oakley could do nothing but give in. Squeeze dry until they had to be bought at nicer price for Luxortica. Eyeglasses. You have no idea the snow job they put most people through when it comes to buying them. It's far, far worse than trying to buy a new car from a dealership. Wholesale frames are about $5.20. Wholesale lens blanks are another $10. Any kind of dip coating, UV, tinting, ETC, is negligible cost and effort to apply. Literally pennies. To top it off, they don't even do a whole lot in house. But send it to labs which are basically sweatshops that can take up to 2-3 weeks when labor time is literally under 5 minutes. Instead of training real opticians and technicians, they're just glorified sales staff now. Most of the time they don't even bother with proper measurement for PD, frame width, or arm fitting. Was an optician in the early 90s. I'm horrified at what the business has become. Mattress industry. Specifically, mattress firm the non-profit world. Unfortunately, most people at the top are in it to make a name for themselves and don't usually care about the mission of the organization. Hear me out, K-pop. All the idol industry is shady. I've seen some interviews on retired idols and they have a lot to say about how the industry works. One of them even mentioned that they would split the profit 70 stroke 30, but when it came to pay, they divide the expenses 50 stroke 50, and if the group didn't made enough money, the idols would be in debt with the producers. Many times, idols would come out much poorer than when they entered. That sounds like what the girl from Crayon Pop said. It was shocking when she also told how they made a North American tour with Lady Gaga and they ended up with more debt. Their income was freaking negative from a Lady Gaga tour. My dad knows a story from someone who works for a nationwide grocery chain. They have to deal with an Italian mafia to import balsamic vinegar. More businesses than you think have to deal with mafiosos and gangsters. I once helped the gang relations person with Habitat for Humanity get reassurance that their volunteers would be protected in an American inner city. They apparently always speak with the gangs beforehand for safety reasons. Rating services like Yelp. Refuse to advertise and your good reviews magically get rearranged. Hey, look if you want to do that and be transparent. I get it. But most every business owner knows how scummy this is and most clients just have no idea. I have a business that isn't something that would usually be looked for on Yelp. They called and I just froze. Luckily I do long term rentals and was sold out. Explained I wouldn't have an opening for months. They seem to leave me alone. Yet they have my business on the front page of Google search. Under the wrong category. I wear. Luke Zotica owns a large majority of eyewear and holds a virtual monopoly on the market. They control all prices and will crush competition. The only reason eyeglasses and sunglasses are so expensive is because of price gouging. Whoa. 
you made it to the end, you're a ducking beast, I'll cut you a deal, smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh, it's free and that's a great price.